Thanks for staying with us. Uh, it's time now to deal with our second hot topic, and this one is combating the spread of AI altered images and deepfakes online. And to do that, we have joining us today Oladi Pupo Balaji, a digital product manager with Microsoft. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to yeah. have you here. Yeah, same here. Microsoft. That means everything is having a soft life now, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome to the program. Now, um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether to say it's, it's, it's worrisome or it's dangerous, or I don't know how to put it, but AI is something that is supposed to give us a new lease of life, to make our life, like I said, soft enough uh, in all aspects. But things are happening now that are making us fear that maybe uh, it's a very wrong move uh, that humanity is making, bringing AI. So let's start to have just, first of all, a preamble, what we really mean when we talk about AI and some of the advantages of having them before we begin to talk about what we are afraid of. Okay, um, thanks for having me once again. We, we are in the uh, era of AI, mm. and um, AI is not new. AI has been with us like uh, maybe 50, 60 years. It's just a way of uh, it's artificial intelligence. So mm. transferring human intelligence onto the machine. Mm. And we've been trying to like build a machine that can, you know, at least been able to do what humans can do and even do it better. Because let's face it, there are some things that are better done with a machine things that are repetitive, for example. Yeah. So humans, we love innovation. At some something point, new. we want to do something new and all that. And we also need to rest. So we just have like a limited amount of time to do whatever we want to do. But you can put a machine there and it keeps running. So but we've been having, uh, we've been struggle to have a breakthrough, not until recently, because now we now have, uh, big computing devices, you have uh, um, cloud, you have internet, and you have uh, mobile. And of recent, we now have uh, advances in uh, large language models that gave us ChatGPT, mm. OpenAI, and all this generative AI. So yeah. now AI can do so much more. So we've, we've had AI in form of robots mm -hmm. in manufacturing, but now we are not having AI at our fingertips. Like we are not democratizing AI. Mm. And that is where the concern you raised in the introduction, that's where the fear is coming from mm. that, okay, now that AI is now ubiquitous, it's everywhere, and we are kind of scaling the power of AI, mm. then hang on a minute, should we be afraid? Should we step back? Yeah. How do we ensure that we are building responsive AI and making sure that it's ethical and yeah. all that? So no, even when we're building responsive AI, are we also building responsible AI? Because uh, let's use the, the robot AI, for instance. In a Muslim country, recently, uh, was it last week or so, I saw the story. In a Muslim country, I'm emphasizing a Muslim country, an AI was built. And on presentation of this AI robot to the public, it was busy grabbing the butt of a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in a Muslim country, they will not build it to do that. Yes. So which gives us the, 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 the idea that this AI, is it really AI? Is it really artificial intelligence? Or they have a mind of their own now? Um, I was, of which uh, even people have been saying yeah. that, that AI is starting to have um, feelings. Because there's, there's that fear, the fear that they might take over the world. If they begin to have a mind of their own and doing things where nobody sent them. So, <laughs> so, so there's, there's this conversation around deterministic and probabilistic. Okay. Like, where should we draw the line? Should we just allow AI to just run among and... Uh, being able to generate things randomly, which is uh, probabilistic, mm. or should we have it deterministic that we can predict the outcome? Mm. For the example that you raised, uh, AI reflects the bias of its creator. 
So, so um, recently you noticed that Google had to pull back their AI mm -hmm. because it was generating uh, black images yeah. uh, because they wanted to like uh, be diverse. And so the, the kind of data they train that AI model on, you know, uh, generate a lot of back, uh, backlash in the community and they had to like step it down. So that example in the Muslim community also, it may not be the AI, it could be the bias of the AI designer. Mm. So I have it down the designer okay. is also... Nobody will believe that in a Muslim country they will that do that. Happen. Yes, because they are reserved in a lot of things. Yeah. And that happened at the unveiling. So the and, and that's the challenge we are also having in Africa, you know, because you need, AI needs quality data to be trained mm. on to be able to do things that we want it to do. Mm. So, um, and that's why we need to generate more data so that the AI that we're building will be inclusive mm. and we can always eliminate that bias mm. from AI. So, for example, the, the black, so when you are using AI in a justice system, for example, and you're a black person, and the AI is already biased towards you mm. that, okay, this one should go to jail like oh okay you're yeah, white so we yeah. should give you a soft landing so those are the kind it depends on the data that we train here mm. and of course we are now getting to a point where we are generating so much of ai data that those data are now being fed back into ai and that brings us to the question whether ai is not having a mind of its, its own, own. Because now AI is now using its own data to train itself. Not even what the humans are giving it anymore. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about um, cons. I know, I know AI definitely has its pros and its cons, their advantages. I mean, I can just stay on my phone right now and say, um, put a prompt and give me what I want. If I want to find out any information about anything, AI will give me that. But let's talk about the cons, the disadvantages of this. For instance, AI getting a mind of its own, and then even the people using it. Because when you look on the internet right now, you're seeing like um, fake, deep fakes. Um, you're seeing pictures that are, you know, you, you think this person is real, but it's an altered image. Um, in fact, the other day, I think I saw, I saw the news of an, a new one coming, but it's not open to public yet. And you're seeing these realistic images. And now, how do you even decipher which one is real which one is fake so let's just talk about the the cons a little bit and what we can even do to ensure that you know we can just tell which one is real and which one is fake pretty much yeah so you're right yesterday i was reading a news magazine and i think in the uk they had to pull back an article because they discovered that the image they used was digitally Mm. was AI altered, mm. kind of. So, so it's a problem and it's a menace. Um, I think what we needed to do first is that uh, awareness like this, that as much as AI is a force for good, it's also a force for... Mm -hmm. the, it depends the on which hands it gets into. Yes. So, and uh, there are also development where AI is also checking AI mm. now. So there are AI tools that can also help us to uh, confirm whether this material has been digitally manipulated, okay. altered, uh, that one. S sometimes also you just need to be, take a, st uh, take, a, take a step back and just slow down. We are in a fast paced moving world, everybody wants, so when you see an information, when they share it in the WhatsApp, before you just share it, mm -hmm. just take a step back. And let's go back to our old time journalism mm -hmm. practice of Traditional. Com confirming the fact. Mm. Like try, uh, try hard it. So say, okay, this thing is coming. Can I check a different source? Mm -hmm. Can I check their website? Mm -hmm. um, so we just need to slow down. We are consuming a lot of information and it's easy for threat actors and um, bad guys to just use this AI to deceive us. So we need to slow down and uh, ask ourselves the question and check other sources. And also sometimes this AI too, although they are getting the deep fake AI are getting sophisticated, mm -hmm. but sometimes you can see that maybe lip 
syncing mm. is not is 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 uh, mm. the lip and the audio is out of sync it could be blurry a little uh the lighting the lightning environment may not be that sharp mm. So well, some, some of, of those them are some of them are really yeah that's what I said they're getting, I mean, they're I, mean, getting I, I saw I saw one where a, a president was advising Nigeria a Nigerian prophet on what to do to release some powers to make Nigeria great and the lip syncing was perfect the picture there was no blurry picture there mm -hmm. the and great. in fact if I didn't know that the 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 topic he was talking can never come out of the uh, that kind of a president, I could have believed it. Now, the question is, these tools are accessible to almost everybody mm -hmm. very, very easily. But what about the tools to help you check? Are they also accessible to people? Uh, so they are, they are getting, mm. being developed, okay. and also becoming more accessible. So the, the thing really is that there's this thing we always say that... Um, regulation always catch up with innovation. Mm. So innovation will fall, fall start. Mm. Then we begin to see how people are using things before we now bring about countermeasures. So, so that's why it seems like they are still getting ahead. So um, tools are being built that you can use to confirm. And sometimes, because everything you have, you create in the digital world, really has a metadata, that is data about that thing. So it's possible and uh, it's probable to build tools that could verify whether this uh, image, this audio, mm. this video is a deep fake or, or, it's, uh, or it has been altered. But of course, you know, it takes extra effort. Okay. And as these things come, uh, they will, some will come with uh, a fee yeah. price mm -hmm. and some also may not deliver what they promise mm. so but we are we are gradually catching up to beauty tools to to also police ai mm. so it's like ai policing ai yeah so i want to talk about social media for a little bit because that's you know where you see a lot of mm -hmm. this um you're seeing it on instagram facebook your whatsapp people are forwarding this stuff to you um don't you think there should be a role that um this social media platforms you know have to play for instance, since we're talking about regulation, um, I'm, I'm just thinking top of my head, maybe there should be a watermark or something so that the next person, for instance, on WhatsApp, if you forward a message, now it tells you forwarded. Initially, it never used to be like that, but just so that you know maybe it's not coming from this source and all of that. So maybe like a watermark like that for you to know that, you know, this is a deep fake or this is, um, you know, AI altered, something like that. Don't you think all of these apps, because they are the ones in the technological space, when you're developing things like that, shouldn't they have the tools for people? Because I'm not going to start looking for how to develop yeah, I, those tools. I, I agree with you. They, they have the power. They, they have the data. They have that reach and mm -hmm. the visibility to do that. The question is, is it in their interest to do? Mm. Uh, because sometimes their business model is also about uh, how many shares, how many, mm. uh, how many of such? Uh, so it's more recre profitable for them. Recreated, but of course we're beginning to see the big players uh, developing responsible AI practices, uh, being ethical in mm. the way they deploy AI, and uh, we're beginning to see government also coming together to say, oh, this is a guide way. Mm. So like. Europe, for example, very strong in regulation yeah. as to what you can do, how you can use the data of their citizen, how you can train, where you can store those uh, data and privacy and all that. So we need as a government and as a people regulators to be able to also come up with those ask to the platform owners to say, when you're using your technology to create this, uh, these are the minimum standards required. You need to warn your user. They need to know that this is an AI-generated thing. And so also, we also need to begin to use those tools to understand how to, you know, um, evaluate them. 
So this is what I mean, right? So if you use ChatGPT a lot, then you'll be able to also see if a document that is being forwarded to you is, is, from. is, is, is from yeah because there's a way you know it will be so perfectly written mm -hmm. no grammatical error some, some people are smart now though there are people who would look at that <laughs> and then rewrite it they're rewriting it with the same words but they just change so, 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 not, so which is good that's and that's that way you're using your own human it, mind it, your, your intelligence yes, which is, is working good as well because we just want you guys are just uh, just uh, uh giving credit to expo <laughs> that, that's what it is. I have a concern now. Uh, you are saying tools are being developed, and that means it's a process. And I, um, I'm not very comfortable because what happens to our justice system, for instance, because that's where you need evidence. The people bring mm -hmm. audio, people bring video, and all that. So if tools are being developed, or let me rephrase that, are there tools already existing? that if it comes to extreme cases, at least in the judiciary, in the courts of law, that can be used to determine whether something is AI generated or not, while we wait for the ones that will be accessible to everybody else. So um, I read a story during the last week of somebody in the court uh, that claimed that that uh, evidence that was produced was uh, digitally generated. Mm -hmm. that that was not my confession. Mm. You see? <laughs> you see? So, 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 it's, already, so, it's, so it's already happening. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, is it lying? Is it truth? So, so that's why we will continue to you know, amend our laws to, as we, amend, as we are changing our laws to accept digital evidence, we also need to recognize that uh, digital evidence can be altered can be manipulated so we now need tools also to verify so things like time timestamp uh, checking the uh, metadata of it and using ai tools also to deconstruct that digital evidence mm -hmm. and know for for example which which software was used where so was it yeah. used and also sometimes also you still need our time tested paper trail like when i'm collecting that evidence mm. there should be maybe a log in the premises that we signed uh, mm -hmm. that, that you were there we were, we were there mm -hmm. to to call to record or to obtain this evidence so so we will need secondary evidence as well so, not just the digital uh, one uh, yeah so mm. okay well whether we like it or not ai has come i'm not saying it has it is coming it has come you <laughs> already said it that it's been with us all this while mm -hmm. we're just trying to develop it into other areas right now but in order for us to be able to catch up as a nation nigeria what do we need to do because if other nations get to a point where they are comfortable using it it might affect us if we are not up to that level so what do we need to put in place now to make sure that the future with ai we are not left behind. So I think uh, first is about awareness, which programs like this yeah. is helping to promote. Uh, the second is also education. So you can't, AI is a uh, high tech, so we need to play in AI. The, the third is also we need to begin to make uh, data uh, available for AI. So for example, our uh, local languages, we need to start to write things down, document mm. things. So imagine you having a ChatGPT trained on your local language, and you, ca you, you can now yeah. use prompt in your local language to say, okay, tell me like a joke in my local language, give me like 10 proverbs, proverbs that even your grandfather cannot even remember. <laughs> yeah, I will be able to, you know, train you on those areas and we need to begin to see how we can use AI to solve our local problems mm. because we are the only one that can solve that. Mm. If we are relying on the visitors to come and solve it for us because they don't have a problem, they will only build things that is biased against us. That is not because they are uh, malicious, it's just because they are not aware of our problem. So uh, they don't understand that problem. But what infrastructure do we need 
to be able to so to that. so beyond so there are different uh, chain in the AI system mm -hmm. you have the deep technical people who will be writing Python who will be writing but first AI is actually about mathematics and statistics right model so mm -hmm. we need good mathematician we oh, need wow. good statistician and we need good uh, journalists linguistic we need people to be able to write well train people well so that is the foundation and once we do that then we need to be begin to digitally transform our environment mm. so that we because ai feeds on data mm. so we need to begin to like move a whole lot into data so that we can have things to train AI on and the next thing is that we need to now have strong regulations mm -hmm. and those strong regulations will, be, will, will help uh, propel investment mm -hmm. so for example if we have a regulation that says that all the data that is being used in Nigeria stays in Nigeria mm -hmm. it will make the big guys to build infrastructure in Nigeria, Here in Nigeria mm -hmm. right. and when they build infrastructure in Nigeria 80% 80, 80 of people that will manage that infrastructure will be Nigerians, Nigerians. Mm -hmm. and when they are managing that, they will also transfer their knowledge to Nigerians mm -hmm. and we begin to scale it up like that. So is there anything the government can do in regards to this infrastructure? Aside, because most times when we think of the government, we think of um, policies, we think of regulation, but is there any way they can actually create this infrastructure for people? Because most times when you hear people are into tech, they decided to you know, go study for themselves. Um, are there tech hubs by the government? Are there things that you know, the government can just do to ensure that we're, we're learning, we're growing, and then we can start to compete with other countries in the world? Sure. Um, I've been following the Minister of uh digital mm -hmm, economy mm -hmm. and uh, digital economy yeah. and he has this uh, three um t program mm. that uh, the government is rolling out i know he also he came from the private sector he built the first tech hub in the country mm. cc hub i used to go there those days and we also have government hubs but you know the problem with government things sometimes is sustainability Mm. So, so if you visit some of those orbs now, they've been There's taken no over by, no by, by, by So you recommend that they could have the hubs and then have a private, yes, public partnership okay. kind mm. of thing. Then the, the next really thing I think government should focus on is our educational institutions. Mm. Because that's really where the impact can be felt. Mm -hmm. Let's update our curriculum. Yes. Let's ensure that our lecturers and our instructors mm -hmm. understand the modern practice teaching methods and let you. them be able to begin to uh, impact that knowledge to the coming generation mm -hmm. let the, their project now be ai driven yeah. and not just copy and paste mm -hmm. uh, give your project to somebody uh, at the business center mm -hmm. bind it and dump it down mm -hmm. let's begin to to give students projects that are relevant to the problem that we are facing as a country and so if we do that we'll have a pipeline of people coming out of our educational institution that are ready for today's yes. market. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100% because, I mean, you see in China, you see little kids, they're already coding, they're already, I'm like, wow, like how did you guys, your future forward, um, I, I agree totally. I think we need more in, you know, education. Our children concept. speak in tongues, so don't, don't <laughs> <laughs> talk down on them. Yeah. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap up yeah. the show. We want to say thank you for, for coming, and it was really nice having a conversation with you. Thank you, too. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Thank All you. All right, so we've just been talking about combating the spread of AI, altered images, and deep fakes online, and we're talking to um, Bola Giola Di Pupo. Well, this is where we have to wrap up this show. Um, it's been nice having the breakfast with you, um, <laughs> with you at home, <laughs> with Yamgul, with, with Bology and everyone. We want to say thank you and we hope that we'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Yamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now.